Today we're going to explore the Unidata 6526H Doppler instrument and this is used in uh, small rivers and waterways to measure the velocity of water. What we're going to do is to uh, just walk you through uh, a simple setup uh, so as you can quickly get uh, the unit operational on the bench uh, assisting you to your eventual um, deployment in your uh, field environment. Okay, as you can see, it's uh, boxed up here as a kit, and uh, the unit, um, when we open it up, has a test certificate, which uh, is a QA document uh, listing what uh, items should be in the box. Uh, we have the Starflow instrument itself inside, uh, with some mounting hardware, a communications cable, and a software disk over here. You'll notice also there is a software key printed on top of the software disk. Um, so all of these parts um, go together to form a basic uh, uh, system for monitoring flow and uh, water depth. I'm going to use that as demonstration purposes this morning uh, just to let you know how to wire it up. So uh, as I say, take note, that's not in the kit. Um, over here we have the uh, mounting bracket, uh, which uh, is used to actually mount the Starflow instrument in place. Um, it's an easy bracket that just simply um, attaches to the Starflow in this manner. You will notice there is a cutout section in the rear side of the Starflow bracket, or the Starflow housing, and these brackets just slide snugly into place. And uh, same on the other side, the four mounting screws or four mounting holes you can see can then be attached to um, a concrete plinth or concrete pad, whatever the uh, user uh, has in mind. Okay, we also have a drying tube and uh, note the desiccant inside is a blue colour. This is used to dry the air before it actually um, enters the Starflow instrument. Um, these are particularly important to use because if you get the situation where water droplets form inside the inside of this cable assembly you will have problems. So uh, we do encourage the use of these tubes. To use them um, you just remove both yellow caps like such and you attach one side to the star flow instrument. There is a little packing screw you might need to remove from that end. And it's just a simple case of sliding it onto the nozzle and then you can cable tie that into place. Okay, so that's the drying tube done. We next move on to the communications cable. And this is used to interface the Starflow instrument to the computer and to the battery. So we remove two protective tags off the battery. With this end, uh, the cable uh, has a black stripe on one of the conductors. The black stripe indicates a negative battery terminal and the solid red conductor goes onto the positive side of the battery, like such. The SQL circular conductor, uh, uh, multipole connector uh, then simply plugs into the end of the Starflow cable, like such. Uh, these two uh, rotate and lock the plug into place so it can't come undone inadvertently. This end of the cable then goes off to the computer, a communications port. There's three wires also which come out of the uh, out of this uh, connector here. Uh, one, the purple wire, is the SDI-12 signal cable. If you uh, uh, if you desire to use the S uh, the uh, Starflow instrument as an SDI-12 instrument, you can do so. Uh, that is a ground wire, and this is a control wire that can control uh, such things as an external water sampler. But uh, more on that later in, a, in a, uh, another video, an advanced video.